50 years ago today, the Apollo 11 astronauts launched from Florida's Kennedy Space Center on a historic mission to become the first people in history to walk on the moon. This was a defining moment in America's history. But what is your favorite? In our 13 WMAZ poll, want to know what defining moment in history from the past 50 years is your tops. Vote now on our app or online at 13 WMAZ.com slash vote. As we remember the launch of the first successful moon landing, Raymond Tubb is looking back at some of the surprising ties between Central Georgia and the space program. Raymond joins us now live in studio after looking back into the archives. Troy Franken in 1989 and 1990, it was a great time for space buffs living around here. A native son actually rode a shuttle into orbit. And we got several chances to see space shuttles in person without ever leaving Central Georgia. May 15, 1989, Atlantis touched down at Robbins. With a little more than an hour's notice, Robbins Air Force Base had to serve as a temporary home for the space shuttle Atlantis. While the shuttle's heat tiles could stand more than 3,000 degrees at reentry, rainwater could damage them. Robbins was perfect for weather stopovers, as Laura Moore reported when it happened again in May of 1990. The shuttle Discovery becomes the latest orbiter to make a landing here because of the weather. So uh, it's very convenient for them to uh, uh, come in here uh, as opposed to staying out in Texas or somewhere else. You know, what they want is a long runway with a good place to park, uh, ready fuel and uh, any uh, minor maintenance that they could get, and we have all of that here. Discovery had just returned from launching the Hubble Space Telescope. People gathered around for a chance to see it. I was there as it headed back to Florida. After staying in middle Georgia for less than a day, the big bird flies southward as it returns home. Just five months earlier, Discovery had taken one of Macon's own into space, astronaut Sonny Carter. Sonny Carter Elementary School is named in his honor. The mission patch is the school's logo. That mission helped create another local space tie. As Chris Holcomb reported, Carter took a taste of home to orbit with him in the form of Fincher's Barbecue. The Finchers made the barbecue just like they were making it for any other customer, and they sent something like this to NASA, complete with barbecue sauce. However, when Sonny eats this in space, it won't look like that. I assume that they'll take what we have sent and make it in in a freeze ride type situation. While Carter's legacy lives on today at the school that bears his name, the astronaut never flew another mission. He was killed along with Senator John Tower in a plane crash in Brunswick, Georgia. But what an example for students. In a life shortened to 43 years, this graduate of Lanier High School became a professional soccer player, a surgeon, a Top Gun pilot, and finally, an astronaut. Those shuttle landings all happened before 9-11, so people were able to actually park along 247 and lean on the fence so they could get a better look at those shuttles. And hundreds did just that each time one of them came through. Uh, Frank, when it comes to my barbecue, I think I'll take mine restaurant fresh over the freeze dry. I was just trying to think about freeze-dried <laughs> barbecue. Oh, all right, thank you, Raymond. If you enjoy heading down memory lane, we have links to the archive stories Raymond found in their entirety. Just check his story online or look for them on our YouTube channel.